I'm Steve for This Oak With Cars and today is a very exciting day for me. Today I am finally completing my Classic Mini collection. The original Classic Mini came in six body styles. The most common is a two-door saloon or a sedan. This is the Mini that everyone thinks about when you mention the word Mini. The next body style is the estate car which could come with or without wood trim on it. The third body style is similar to the estate car but without windows and that's called the van. The last three body styles are pretty rare especially here in the United States. The fourth body style is the Moke which is the small Jeep looking version of the classic Mini. The rarest of all the body styles is the beach car and I'm lucky enough to own one of those. And now to complete my collection with the last body style that I did not have is the pickup truck. This one here is a 1963 Austin pickup. Let's take a look around it. Unfortunately, this had three flat tires, so it was quite a chore to get it up here on the lift. Let's take a look inside. First thing you notice, the seats have been changed. These are vintage Corbo racing seats. A radio and tachometer have been added. It looks like the water gauge has been replaced with an American unit. This one was equipped with a heater. There are two glove boxes. Not much in those. The start button for the engine is down here on the floor. And something that I found pretty interesting is there's actually a floor underneath the floor of the bed. Down here you stow your spare tire. And on the other side, that's where the battery hooks up. The bed is pretty long considering the rest of the car. It's about half the length of the total length of the vehicle. I did get some pretty interesting parts with it. I got a complete bow set and the soft top to cover this bed. This soft top has never been used, never taken out of the box. It looks like it was shipped to an address in England and then that person forwarded it on to someone here in the States. But those bows would go into the holes on the side of the bed and it would curve up. Over the bed, you would lay your canvas on the top of that, very similar to the tops that military trucks around the world use. On the back, we have a very beefy bumper. We have a license plate from 1994, which indicates that this truck has probably not been on the road in 30 years. To put the tailgate down, you would pull these pins up, and that locks the tailgate in the up position, and then you can just lower it down. On this side, someone has installed a chrome surround around the gas filler, but I did get the original one included with the truck. Again, I have two flat tires on this side. This one has even de-beaded itself. Under the bonnet should be an 850cc engine. This one is missing its data plate though, and I'm not sure that this is an 850. I think this might be a larger engine. I was even told that maybe the transmission is a full synchro version from an Austin America. This one also has power brakes on it, as well as dual carburetors, which is a good indication that this is a larger than 850cc engine. None of the HT leads are hooked up. I have a broken spark plug over here. Obviously, if this hasn't run in 30 years, I have my work cut out for me. So at least for the near future, I will have an unlimited amount of work to do on this pickup. The first thing I'm going to work on is replacing all of these flat tires. I'm going to replace them with a set of Cosmo wheels with tires that hold air. The tires that are on this particular set of Cosmos are a set of vintage Goodyears. This would be the type of tire that you would have seen something like this driving around on. And once I get these fitted, I can easily move this vehicle around. I think these look a lot better and I can easily move the truck around. When I was taking the wheel off of this corner here, I could tell that the brakes are sticking a bit. So I'm definitely going to have some rusted and stuck brakes to deal with when I get to that point. Next, let's take a look at the engine and determine what condition it's in. 
Let's take the spark plugs out. That way we can see the condition of the cylinders and the engine will turn over easily if it's not frozen up. Now let's take the boroscope and look down inside the cylinders. That looks pretty nice in there. Cylinder walls look good. Let's move on to the next one. Looks like there's just a little bit of rust starting where the piston and cylinder wall are meeting right there. Let's go to the next one. This one also looks pretty good. And the last one looks really good, just like the first one. Okay, I don't think we have any major problems here right now. I'm going to put a few squirts of oil in each cylinder before I try to crank it. I want to put a battery in to see if the starter will turn, but there is no battery left in here, and I'm not sure if this vehicle is positive or negative ground. There is a modern tape deck mounted over here, so I'm almost certain that this vehicle has been converted to negative ground. So that's the way I'm going to hook it up. It looks like if I'm going to hook this up negative ground, I would actually want a battery with the terminals on the opposite sides. So I think I'm going to go back and exchange this battery for one with the terminals on the opposite sides. Because if I slide this back, the terminals are going to be right below this edge here and could cause a short. I'd rather have the terminals be sticking out here. And if I were to turn the battery the other way around, I'm not sure that the wires would reach them properly. So the best thing in this situation is to go and get another battery. I am back now with a battery with the terminals on opposite sides. Now that can slide under there. Let's carefully touch the negative. No sparks, so that's a good sign. Looks like the seat clears it. At some point, I'll need to figure out a battery tie down but this is good enough for now. Now let's hit the starter button, see if the starter turns. Nothing. I'm now underneath the truck and this is the starter switch that was on the floor. This wire here runs from the battery that I just installed and it goes over to this terminal. There's a small wire here that is also connected to that terminal that supplies power to the truck. And then on the other side of the switch is this large cable that would run up to the starter motor. But if we follow this cable, for some reason, it has been cut. Here's the other end of it right here. I might be able to join the two ends back together, but I'm not sure why it was cut like this. This wire here would go straight up to the starter motor, which makes this very easy now to use this to turn the starter over. So I'm going to grab a jump pack connect power up to here and we'll see if the engine turns over. I'll connect the ground to the car. Then if I touch power to this wire, the engine should turn over. Which it does. So we know the engine turns over. Now we need to figure out why this was cut like this. I have my voltmeter connected and you can see on the terminal that the battery is connected to, I have 12.3 volts. Let's move it over to the other one. Now, I would need someone inside the car to push this button for me, or I need to go up there and push it myself. Luckily, this multimeter has Bluetooth, so I can leave it down here, and then let's go inside the car, use my phone, and we can see if anything happens when we hit the button. I'm connected to my multimeter with Bluetooth over here. Now let's hit the button and see if we see a voltage here. We do. So the switch works. So I don't understand why they cut that cable there. But if I put that cable back together, we should be able to run the engine from the switch inside the truck. I found some heat shrink that fits over the cable. 
I found a butt connector. Now I just need to strip this end and put them together. Now I can push these together. And use my crimper to hold this tight. Now I'll slide on the heat shrink. I'm going to slide on another piece from the other direction, right over the top of that one. Now we can go back up top and see if the start button works. The battery cable is reconnected. Let's give this another try. Nothing. So the switch is bad after all. It does work as a switch for low current devices, such as my multimeter. So when I hit the switch, it connected the two together and the multimeter showed that we had voltage. But when the starter tries to run from it, this switch cannot carry enough current to run the starter. So this likely is the reason why the truck was parked for so long and never driven again. So I'll need to order a new switch if I want to start the engine from inside the cab. Just for fun, let's turn the key on, see if anything happens. Nothing. Doesn't look like we have any power up here, so we'll have plenty more electrical issues after we fix the starter switch. What does this say? It says life vests under your seat, seat cushion usable for flotation. Someone probably took that off an airplane and stuck it up there. I'm going to order a new starter switch for the pickup. This is a similar problem to one that we ran into with the Lectra where a circuit could not pull enough current to run the devices on it, but the circuit would look good to a multimeter, which only requires a very small amount of current to show that there's a voltage there. So far, everything is looking pretty good. We haven't seen any major problems with the truck yet. So I hope you're as excited as I am about this project. And if you want to see more of this truck, comment below and click subscribe.